Hi there friends and welcome back to the Lemonade Stand or welcome if you are new. My name is Brianna. I'm a certified personal trainer, a big huge biology nerd, and a registered dietitian to be. Today's video is going to be interesting because the person we're talking about is someone who you very likely may have heard of. A pretty popular anti-MLM YouTube content creator named Jessica Hickson is promoting some very dangerous pseudoscientific viewpoints and products on her TikTok accounts. And I have a lot to say about it. Before we proceed, if you love science-based health, wellness, and fitness education with some lols and some dry sarcasm along the way, hit that subscribe button and join the lemonade stand. I would sure love to have you here. Without further ado, let's make lemonade, but I'm drinking coffee. Okay, so before I get started, there are a few things I need to say. If you are a fan of my anti-MLM content, then you have very likely heard of Jessica Hickson. She makes exclusively anti-MLM content. I was a fan of her as well at one point until I found out what she was promoting and then I became highly disappointed. The cornerstone of my content is evidence in science-based health, wellness, fitness, nutrition, education, which does very often include anti-MLM related content. That's my wheelhouse, that's what I love, that's what I do. A pretty popular anti-MLM creator in this movement is promoting dangerous pseudoscience on her social media platforms and no one has said anything about it, like, at all. No one, that is, except another content creator, a YouTuber, registered dietitian, and her name is Kat Benson. I actually am a fan of Kat Benson. I actually, if you saw my Bravenly Global deep dive from last month, I actually mentioned her in uh, that video and I showed a couple clips of her Bravenly Global deep dive because I thought it was very well put together and I just thought it was a good video and I wanted to share it with you guys. Being a registered dietitian, Cat's Jam is diving into nutrition and healthcare related scams, which again, very often includes anti-MLM related content. Cat is a smaller creator, so you may not have heard of her, but that does not make her message any less impactful. This entire situation was brought to my attention because of Cat. So thank you, Cat, for speaking out about this. I am absolutely absolutely shocked, like flabbergasted, that no one in the anti-MLM uh, space uh, on YouTube or Instagram, whatever, no one has mentioned this at all. I am not here to tell you to unsubscribe from Jessica or unfollow Jessica Hickson. This is not a smear campaign. This is not a bashing video. I don't condone anyone being rude to her, giving her any hate or leaving uh, mean comments on her, on any of her social media platforms. Because the fact of the matter is, I do believe that it was desperation that's led Jessica to where she's at now with what I'm gonna talk about today. And in that regard, I actually do consider her to be a victim. However, sometimes victims become perpetrators. And in my opinion, they should still be held accountable. I am making this video because I believe all of you should be aware that what she is promoting is dangerous and I implore all of you not to try it. I am saying her name and I'm not concealing her face because she's a public figure. I want you guys to treat this video as if I'm talking about just another random influencer that I'm always talking about on my channel. Just like another influencer who's peddling pseudoscientific nonsense. The fact that she also happens to be another anti-MLM creator should be irrelevant, but also I don't see that as a veil of protection over her. And I'm also saying this for the people who might come in my comment section and who are big fans of Jessica who don't like that I'm being critical of her and say something along the lines of, well, how can you say that about another YouTuber? How can you say that about another anti-MLM creator? That carries the very same energy as when people and MLMs say things like, well, how can women bash other women? We're all women. We're supposed to be uplifting each other and supporting each other, blah, 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 blah. Save it, okay? I don't really care that we have the same sex chromosomes. Women can be terrible people too. You're missing the point. And when we explain it, it's not, we're not women bashing women. We're women being critical of other people doing scammy and terrible things who also happen to be women. The fact that we have the same sex chromosomes is irrelevant. So just keep that in mind. In general, I very much like to keep to myself. And in terms of like other YouTubers, I have a very, very small circle of friends, which is exactly how I like it. And to be honest, that's how I am in my real life outside of YouTube. I have a very small circle of friends and I I don't socialize with a lot of people. <laughs> I like my solitude and I like quiet. I say all that because I feel like there's a good chance there's going to be some hardcore Jessica fans in my comment section saying that I'm just trying to start drama. And I'm telling you right now, save it. That's completely absurd. Why would I intentionally incite drama? That does absolutely nothing to serve me. I have never interacted with Jessica ever that I can recall. I did mention, I did at one point uh, subscribe to her on YouTube, 
um, but I don't anymore. And I don't even think I follow her on Instagram, actually. I don't think I've ever even said her name on my channel before this. So before you try and get in my comment section and tell me that I'm trying to stir the pot or start drama, I'm just telling you right now to save it. That does absolutely nothing to serve me because I'm not a 13 year old girl. I will maintain as much respect as possible. And for the fans, I may even pull the reins on my sarcasm a little bit. If you find yourself unable to take a step back and look objectively and critically at somebody on social media who you may be a fan of, then I would ask you to look inward and ask yourself why. Is it because you agree with her and still like what she does otherwise? So you can kind of just give her a pass on this because you know what that is? That's cognitive dissonance. The very same cognitive dissonance that we often observe in people in the throes of multi-level marketing. Cognitive dissonance is typically defined simply as your thoughts and beliefs being inconsistent with your reality. For example, being able to apply skepticism and doubt to the tomfoolery that we see in multi-level marketing, but not applying that same skepticism when seeing pseudoscientific cures on the internet. If you cannot open your eyes and critically look at somebody just because you share the same belief system as them, that's not a great sign. So I really don't care if we are on the same team. If somebody is doing something wrong, dangerous, or inappropriate, they should be criticized and they should be held accountable for that action. Now, with all that being said, let's like actually get into the nitty gritty. So as I said, and as most of you probably already know, but just in case you don't, Jessica Hickson is a pretty popular anti-MLM creator here on YouTube. She has around 25,000 subscribers. And again, the bulk of her content is anti-MLM themed. This stems from she herself once being at the top of the popular multi-level marketing company, It Works, realizing it wasn't really all that, and then stepping back and ultimately walking away from it. She then created a platform that was dedicated to debunking and clarifying the misinformation and misleading information put out by multi-level marketing distributors and she's become something of an activist for educating people on the harm and dangers of the multi-level marketing business model. A very admirable cause in my opinion. Because frankly, we don't see very often people in very from very high positions in multi-level marketing companies kind of stepping down due to their moral compass telling them that something is off. A lot of top distributors in a lot of these multi-level marketing companies know exactly what they are doing and know that they are in fact not helping people, but just don't care because they're making so much money. I personally, call those people morally bankrupt. So that's all well and good, but something that many of you may or may not be aware of is that Jessica actually has quite the following on TikTok. On TikTok, she has garnered a following of almost 450,000 followers. That is quite an audience. And again, I am just truly baffled and I have a really hard time believing that not one of those almost 450,000 people followed her to TikTok from YouTube that find what she's doing on TikTok to be problematic. So getting into the nitty gritty, getting into uh, like the big, what I'm talking about. So over the last couple of years, Jessica has been documenting her uh, living with a condition called parosmia. Parosmia in short means a distorted sense of smell and it can sometimes also affect your sense of taste as well. It's implied that her case of parosmia is related to her contracting COVID-19, which I will be referring to as DIVIC henceforth because I don't want this video demonetized because Brianna has bills to pay. DIVIC is this spelled backwards. That's my super clever code word for it. I'm so original. I have a condition called parasmia where everything tastes and smells like garbage. This fast has been known to like reset your digestive system and help with the way that foods taste and smell. So based on her post, Jessica is dealing with something called long divic. I wanna be accurate and provide the proper uh, definition here for you guys. So I wanted to read a little bit about long divic directly from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC's website. Post Divic conditions are a wide range of new returning or ongoing health problems that people experience after being infected with the virus that causes Divic 19. Most people with Divic 19 get better within a few days to a few weeks after infection. So at least four weeks after infection is the start of when post Divic conditions could first be identified. Anyone who was infected can experience post-divic conditions. Most people with post-divic conditions experience symptoms days after first learning they had divic 19, but some who later experienced post-divic conditions did not know when they got infected. There is no test that determines if your symptoms or condition 
is due to DIVIC-19. Post-DIVIC conditions are not one illness. Your healthcare provider considers a diagnosis of post-DIVIC conditions based on your health history, including if you had a diagnosis of DIVIC-19, either by a positive test or by symptoms or exposure, as well as doing a health examination. And according to the data, parosmia can actually be a symptom of long DIVIC. So over the last couple of years, Jessica has made a lot of attempts to treat and cure her parosmia to no avail. She tried a lot of different methods. Some of these methods are not considered to be like the pinnacle of scientific research, I would say. However, I do just want to point out right now that I think this is a good example of uh, how people who are otherwise level-headed and evidence-based can be led astray when they feel that the healthcare system in modern medicine has failed them. When people are desperate, they do things they wouldn't normally do. They behave in ways they wouldn't normally behave, like starve themselves for three days at a time or deworm. Yes, I said deworm. So I recently made a video about an eight to 12 inch friend that checked out of my booty hole after a very lengthy vacation stay in my intestines, right? Well, you guys had a lot of thoughts on the matter. So today I'm going to go ahead and address some of the comments that I saw reoccurring in the comment section. I had someone who of course feels the need to list all their credentials before they say anything, comment back and say that it was placebo effect. If you watch the video, you know that I was not doing this fast, trying to deworm myself. I didn't know that was gonna happen. I was doing this fast in order to try to help my parosmia. As long story short, I started another fast the time before I did a five day fast and I failed on day three. I'm now on day two, uh, two and a half. Anyways, I'm now into my fast and I feel great this time. Like last time I was TMI shooting my brains out. <laughs> so the type of fast that I did was a three day water fast. I did allow myself to have black coffee because I get caffeine headaches really bad. I know it's a habit that I need to kick, but I'm not willing to do that right now. We're focused on other things. So it was a three-day water fast. I did a fast once before that was supposed to be a five-day fast, but around day like two and a half, three, I started getting really sick. I was like peeing out of my booty hole, if you know what I'm saying. And it was just really bad. I had a migraine and I couldn't continue with it. So I ended up stopping it. But a lot of you guys were asking like which one I bought. And honestly, I just went to Walgreens and I got the first one that I saw, which was, I think the brand was called Reese's which I didn't even like put the two together when I said that I eat Reese's every night at that time. I really don't feel like getting into fasting. You guys already know how I feel about fasting. There are sometimes appropriate applications for it in the clinical setting. However, it's not a magical cure for every goddamn thing under the sun like fasting zealots love to act like it is, okay? What we're going to focus on is this deworming crap. No pun intended by saying crap. In my opinion, this is as dangerous, if not more, than the promotion of healthy people fasting for days at a time. Not only is she just showing herself using these deworming products, she's also apparently kind of kind of, I guess you could say, collaborating with brands on using deworming products, specifically a product called Paragard. But her first deworming actually started with a product that she just got over the counter at Walgreens. The trend of deworming has gained quite a bit of traction on social media lately. I call it a trend because that's exactly what I consider it. And that seems to be the consensus among actual health and science professionals. Apparently everybody just thinks that they have parasites living rent-free inside them now, but it's become very apparent that a lot of the people that believe believe this, A, know absolutely nothing about human biology and physiology, or B, just wanna line their own pockets by selling you a deworming product. Or they'll give you like their discount code so you can use your discount code, get a little discount on your bowel evacuation products. Or it's a combination of both A and B. The thing about deworming in healthy humans is that most people probably don't need to do it. And there's plenty of evidence to back this up, especially people who live in a developed first world country such as the United States. And many of these deworming products on the market are just weird proprietary blends of unregulated ingredients that have not been conclusively proven to do anything. And this information is not difficult to find you guys. In a WCNC article, a Dr. Carla Robinson said that the average healthy person does not need to deworm and that parasite infections are very rare in the United States. A Yahoo article I found published about Jessica Hickson back in September of 2021 featured a Dr. Juan de Dumoy, I hope I said that right, a pediatric infectious disease physician at Johns Hopkins. He said that the most common parasite infection in the United States is actually pinworms, which are very small and more common in children. A pretty stark contrast to the allegedly eight to 12 inch worm that Jessica 
Jessica claimed to have seen in her stool. So I recently made a video about an eight to 12 inch friend that checked out of my booty hole. In a Norton Health article titled, Is the TikTok Paragard Cleanse Safe? A Dr. Mona Lisa Taylor, great name by the way, said that this product will probably make you go and cause a lot of other GI issues to happen, but it's highly unlikely that it will be deworming you. She also said that parasite infections are highly uncommon in the United States. She called it, quote, one of the more dangerous trends and said that if you think you have a parasitic infection, see a doctor. Now, the concept of a parasitic infection is not complete pseudoscience. Parasitic infections in humans are definitely a thing and they can absolutely happen. However, in general, and when to reiterate, in the United States, a developed first world country, these are extremely rare. And on top of that, it's very rare that somebody would have a parasitic infection and show absolutely no symptoms. That's why it comes as no surprise to me that science has a plausible explanation for what Jessica and many others who claim to be deworming see in the toilet. Allow me to introduce the plague doctress as she goes by on TikTok. She has a background in public health and shares science-based education on her platform. She's actually stitched a couple of videos that Jessica has made in an effort to debunk this deworming nonsense that Jessica's talking about. I'll play one right now in which she talks a little bit about what Jessica likely saw in her poop as well as a few other things. Okay, so let's talk about this video quickly. This is the creator, the video she posted, she's encouraging everyone to look up ropeworms. Um, she says that they are debated within science. Some scientists seem to think they are a new species of parasitic worms, and some scientists believe that they are intestinal lining, which is not accurate. It's not true because most scientists agree that rope worm is a pseudoscientific term to describe the intestinal lining that you shit out when you have a colonic enema or you are otherwise damaging your intestines in some way. I cannot find any robust peer-reviewed study that proves that rope worms are anything more than the lining of your intestines. Uh, I found a 2021 study out of Kuwait that cites, according to some scientists, there are parasitic worms due to the presence of human DNA. Uh, you know, it also contains human DNA, human tissue. I looked at that study that they cited where they're mentioning scientists think that it's a parasite because it contains human DNA. Not true. That study says that they did not even get enough um, evidence to identify the species. They also mentioned in this Kuwait study that they had patients treated at their clinic with um, antiparasitic drugs several times, and the only thing that helped was an enema. That's because it's intestinal lining. If it was a parasite, the antiparasitic drugs would have taken care of it. More than likely. More than likely it would have been taken care of. The only other people on the internet I see purporting this as true are folks who financially benefit from you believing that you have parasites, but you're asymptomatic and should buy their product in order to get rid of their parasites. In that clip, the plague doctress was nicely and politely clarifying the misinformation that Jessica had previously shared in another TikTok about fasting the resulting worm in her stool. And this does seem like a good time to mention rope worms. Rope worms are widely considered to be pseudoscience. <laughs> Something that seems to be very common among these people in social media pushing for healthy adults to deworm themselves is they love to say, oh, you have rope worms in your stool. However, according to the science and like what the plague doctor says, these rope worms are more than likely to be pieces of your intestinal lining mixed in with some mucus remnants. The only studies I could find on rope worms, which the plague doctors actually mentioned in that clip I just showed you, are not peer reviewed and to my knowledge have yet to be verified. So I guess in short, be very wary of people who say that you have rope worms and need to shit them out. Here Here's another clip from the plague doctors about deworming. You're supposed to cleanse your body of parasites, like literally worms. And Hi, no, that's not literally worms. That is literally the lining of your organs that you're shitting out because you're damaging your organs. There are ingredients in these products that cause you to shit your brains out, and then the manufacturer will call that a cleanse. Um, ironically, you're also stripping your gut of all of its beneficial microbiome and you're stripping it of some flora as well. You're damaging your large intestine and or colon to the point where it sheds its mucosal lining and then you're pooping out that mucosal lining and that looks like worms. It's not worms. There is not a single peer-reviewed reputable study that can prove that co that coming out of people is worms. Rope worms are not real. You do not have intestinal parasites. If you're living in a developed country with filtered water, you're not drinking out of mud puddles, 
you do not have intestinal parasites. The the chance is very, very low. Never zero, but very low. Um, if you think you have intestinal parasites, you should go to a doctor. Um, if you have intestinal parasites, you're going to have symptoms like incredibly extreme bloating, bloody mucusy diarrhea, vomiting, nausea. You don't have parasites unless you're drinking out of contaminated water sources or you're literally handling people's poop with your bare hands and then putting them in your mouth. So continuing talking about dewormers, I guess at some point a commercial deworming product called Paragard reached out to Jessica and offered to send her some product asking her to try it. So Jessica Jessica Hickson agreed to, and um, I mean, I guess we can use the word collaborate with this company to use this deworming product and I guess kind of talk about her results. I look at the toilet and there's something in there. So you guys probably remember me from that last video. So that was just the result of a three day fast. But when I tell you I was shooketh when I saw what I saw in the toilet, I was shooketh. After that, I learned that up to 100 of them could be living and thriving inside of your intestines. So when Paragard reached out and asked me to try their product, I was like, hell yeah, brother. If what happened in the bathroom that day happened solely from fasting, I cannot imagine what's going to happen when I take something that's actually meant to cleanse my system out. So stay tuned. Okay, so I think I'm on like day seven of the Paragard cleanse, but I just wanted to give you guys a little update because I know a lot of you guys are curious after my history with worms, if you know what I'm saying. So I haven't noticed like worms coming out of my ears or anything of that nature, though Loki kind of wish that would happen because my algorithm be tripping lately. But I have noticed some other changes and one of them you see right here, my skin. She is glowing. She is giving flawless. And of course I am wearing makeup, you know, but however, I am like an adult acne person. Another thing that has improved for me is my brain fog. After I got COVID, I feel like my brain just went crazy. And now over the last like three or four days, I feel like I'm just so much more clear headed. I'm really not expecting worms to be like crawling out of every crevice of my body for this. Like the worms are known to thrive inside of my body. I'm not expecting that to happen for this. I really have just heard that it helps with like sugar cravings and I have a sugar addiction. Despite the very strong evidence that these products are at the very least just a waste of money or at most could seriously cause injury to people. So circling back to the plague doctress, in her response to nicely debunking Jessica and giving her a science-based and well thought out response, um, I guess Jessica responded with this clip of her just doubling down on using the Paragard dewormer. She's not talking. It's just audio. It's like, you don't get it. You don't understand me or whatever. If that's a movie reference or a song, I don't, I don't know what it is. There's a point about this clip that I did not articulate for some reason in the video. So um, I'm just putting it in right now while I'm editing. I guess Jessica's defense of saying, um, you don't get it is, is kind of her, you know, being like, well, you don't really know what I've been going through. So this is what is working for me. So this is what I'm doing. You don't know what I've been going through. If I could say as respectfully as possible, this is a terrible defense. And I do see people using this to defend Jessica in my comment section who were angry about this video saying things like, well, you don't know what parosmia is like. Well, you don't know what she's been going through. So um, therefore you can't criticize. First of all, yes, I can criticize. Second of all, this discussion is not about parosmia. This discussion is about the dangerous pseudoscientific cure, quote unquote, that she's promoting, which is dewormer. I don't have to be dealing with a uh, long haul parosmia to know that deworming products on the market are dangerous and pseudoscience. So no, I don't know what she's been going through for the last couple of years, but two plus two is still four. That doesn't negate the science that deworming and the concept of using products to deworm a healthy human body, that doesn't negate the fact that it's still pseudoscience and that it's dangerous. Yeah, I guess that's my, that's kind of my rebuttal to anyone who wants to use the argument, well, you don't know what she's been going through. I don't have to know what she's been going through. Two plus two is still four and the science is still pretty definitive on this stuff. So before I close here, I wanna take another opportunity to mention another really good resource about the whole deworming nonsense. A YouTuber named Marin Hunsberger shared a video in July of 2021 about parasite cleanses. Marin is not a healthcare professional, However, at the time of that video, she was actually finishing up her master's degree in medical microbiology. And actually at this point in time, like right now that you guys are watching my video, she's actually done and she earned that degree. Yes, queen. And in Marin's video, she talks about parasitic worm infections, types of parasites, and the trend of deworming just kind of gaining a lot of attention on social media. And she also goes into a very detailed explanation of why you probably don't need it. I will link Marin's video below. Now, before I close my video, I'd like to express just one final sentiment. In my opinion, <laughs> This is all my opinion. Jessica's display when it comes to this whole deworming crap is very 
hurtful to the anti-MLM message, I think. It hurts the credibility of like what we're trying to do here. People on the outside will look at this and be like, well, wait a minute, I thought you guys were supposed to be against scams, but this person who's supposedly in the anti-MLM movement is promoting this dangerous pseudoscience. What gives? I will reiterate my point made in the beginning. Why Jessica cannot or will not apply the same skepticism and doubt that she applies to the claims made by multi-level marketing distributors to this. This very easily disprovable pseudoscience that can very well harm people and is likely harming people right now as we speak. I don't know if she is being paid by the folks over at Paragard. Um, we did see another influencer who was promoting the same product. So I assume at the very least, these influencers are getting, they're, they're getting a free bottle of the stuff to use. I assume it's free. That's kind of, that's normally how like those brand deals and collaboration type things work. But I do wonder if on top of getting a free bottle, if they're being paid to promote it or um, maybe being given like, here's a discount code and everybody who uses it gets like 10% off or something like that. If other influencers are promoting it, I have to imagine that they're getting some kind of kickback. This is the kind of unethical behavior that I talk about day in and day out on my channel when it comes to health and science. It's harmful and exploitative of people who just wanna feel better. The very last thing I'm gonna say here, and I hope this has become obvious to you, if you think you have a parasitic infection, please go to the doctor. Don't attempt to deworm yourself. See a doctor, please. All right, if you made it to this point in the video, thank you very much for watching and thank you for keeping an open mind, if you did. I hope you continue to choose wisely who you give your views and your money to. And of course, as always, stay informed, stay educated, and steer clear of pseudoscientific bullshit. One last thing that I wanna take the opportunity to say is that I do very much wish the best for Jessica. I hope that she finds health and I hope that she uh, just does it safely, but I also hope that she discontinues the promotion of uh, dangerous things that can get people hurt. I hope she finds what she's looking for and I hope that um, she does right by her uh, followers. So yeah, that's uh, all I'm gonna say. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Queen Lemon, over and out. Okay, I just have Stormy in here with me right now. Hello, baby. <gasps> oh, who's a pretty girl? Oh, I think I knocked something around when I dropped the camera just now and now it's not focused. I'm sorry, we're a little bit out of focus here. You so pretty. You so pretty, you will say bye to the people. You will say bye to the people. Everyone, for those of you who don't know, this is our foster puppy, Stormy. Isn't she so adorable? Isn't she so cute? Isn't she so cute? Ow! Why you bite me all the time? <laughs> you say bye? Sit. Good girl. Good girl.